I'm gonna do a quick shaky iPhone video. Everybody loves those on setting up this KE2 Evap RE2. First step is to hit back and right until it displays Wi-Fi on on the screen and you can connect with a phone, tablet, or a laptop. So in this case, in a laptop, I find it. So I don't wanna pop up my wireless list, but that's what I'm connected to, the RE2 and the number of the controller. And if I pop up my Wi-Fi, you guys will know where I'm at and I'm probably not supposed to include that. We got our main board here. You can do all this through the user interface. You're just gonna hate your life. So I would recommend avoiding that wherever possible. I've had an issue in the past where the controller would not connect wirelessly. And in that case, you run a LAN cable from your laptop. So this is a coupler here. So it plugs in on the outside. Or if you can get your laptop close enough, you can unplug this and plug it right in to your computer. We have our suction pressure transducer, our first electronic valve. This is for remote communication, the RS-485. We don't care about that. We have suction and coil temperatures and return air temperature there. And here we have an accessory board to hook up another electronic valve at the top there and hook in the sensors for that. So suction, so the coil and suction pressure there. So you gotta make sure all of that is landed correctly in your evaporators where it needs to be. So in this case, we're referencing one room temperature and one pressure transducer. So when I first started this up, I was having some alarms, of course, because you got to set your fan current and defrost current because the CTs see that. So I got my fan current set. I just went in there and I set it for what it was seeing now because everything's running normally. And I set the range for one amp plus or minus. 10% um, is recommended, but these, you know, you're talking about not a lot of amperage here, so I set it for one. The defrost heaters, I set it for 10% plus or minus. So I'll run it in defrost, I'll test defrost, and set that. Now you just gotta make sure you assign all your sensors correctly and that they're landed correctly. So you'll have to verify all of that. We're not gonna get into all of that. I mean, that's basically just tracing out wires and looking at everything handily, everything's labeled here. So what I had to do, critical things that I had to do, um, is I set this thing up for uh, standard electric. So it might be here in the, in the set points. We can just look at it from, you can access it from multiple menus, but we look at important settings, defrost type electric, cause that's what we have here. Valve type one, we can scroll down see refrigeration I gotta review the specs and adjust a few of these parameters but you know here we got pretty much default except for the room temperature I switched that I had to program the refrigerant we'll have to play with some more stuff they want a 10 degree superheat here it comes factory set at 8 so just go for your specs you can go to home and you can adjust that from here so this comes set mechanical choose your valve type of what you're using or you can make a custom one so I got all that set to my first electronic valve and then my second electronic valve right here. My inputs, I, input three was set for suction pressure. I disabled it and I have it using main control sensors. That's gonna keep this valve. Now I had to do the same valve here, refrigerant type, all that stuff. So I disabled the suction pressure transducer because we're only using one and I'm telling it to use the main control sensors there to control it. So we're running both of our valves based off the one transducer. And that's pretty much that. You see we got our suction temps are slightly different. So even though it says it's using the main sensors, that's only gonna be for sensors it's not using for something else, right? So you see our coil temp, it's still using its coil temp and its suction temp, it's just not looking for that suction pressure as you can see disabled right there on input three. That's pretty much it for the medium temp. I would initiate a defrost. So let's go through that. We can go to defrost and we can do 
it's set for demand, that's where this customer wants it. Next mode. So, defrost delay fan. Now our defrost current has gone to 23.7 amps. What is the setting? See it now, it just turned into alarm. So we'll go to like 24 amps is where it was. And then we'll go to the acceptable range and 10% would be 2.4, but we'll go 2.5 because I'm just that kind of guy. So it went to drain already. It terminated defrost right away. It felt it didn't need to be in there for me. That alarm should go away once it gets out of defrost or that's an alert. The red would be an alarm. If we want to get out of defrost faster, we go back to set points, we go back to defrost, and we scroll down and hit next mode, then it kicks us out again. I think, can we do it from down here? I'm sorry if the phone's going in and out of focus. There's nothing really I can do. I'm filming a screen. So we'll go to set points again, and we'll go to defrost. And what mode are we currently in? I forgot to look. So our fans haven't pulled back in, so we'll go next mode. All right, now we're back to refrigerate. We're in de fan delay there or something. I'll have to switch that setting, but that's how you kick it through the steps of defrost to test everything out. So that's pretty much all we have to go over. That covers, since this has electric defrost, what you would do for a freezer as well, you would just put your set point lower, obviously, and test everything the same way. That's pretty much it on this. I gotta get these things charged up properly and go from there and make sure everything's working right. My suction pressure got a little high. I think my condensing unit, you know what it is, my condensing unit has a time delay. And since it didn't spend a lot of time in defrost, there it goes. Um, since it didn't spend a lot of time in defrost, it was still waiting on that time delay. That's pretty much that for these. There's nothing really to see in there. It's just standard evaporators with sensors hooked to them and electronic valves installed. Hopefully this is helpful. Another installation note to watch out for is these two speed evaporator fans. So normally these wires are going from this relay down to here. You can see that on the schematic, it really doesn't matter. In this case, we're controlling our fans from our KE2 contactor. So we don't have the ability to utilize the low speed fan necessarily. So we're removing that to run the fans in high speed only in this application. We're only gonna be running in high speed from the KE2 and you could just pull these off and the fans will only run in high speed. Otherwise they're stuck in low speed unless you did some rewiring here. So just to show this in more detail, I have no provision in this KE2 to run low speed EVAP fans with the amount of wires that are run. We would have to have an extra wire run powered all the time to run those fans in low speed. Unfortunately, we can't use low fan. In the freezer, it doesn't matter really so much. In the cooler, it might be nice, but either way, in this application, can't do it unless we ran extra wires, so that's why we have to unplug those. So one more thing to show, we have this wire here spliced and running to aux one function on our main board. This is a door switch for the freezer. So we're gonna look at aux one, we're gonna change it to door switch and we're gonna hit save now I think we got to reverse the output on there somehow let's see active closed active open and we'll hit save sorry I was off screen let me back up here so right now door switch showing the doors closed and I don't know if you heard the contactor but door switch was open and now the door just swung back shut on its own it went back to a closed state and then the fan contactor pulled back in. So that's set up and working properly. Okay, so another application note regarding low speed fan. It may be possible to run in the cooler pretty easily, but not in the freezer because, and I'll go over to this panel even though it looks identical. We don't wanna run fans in defrost in a freezer. So we would have to do some extra relay logic in here so that our fans are disabled in defrost on the freezer so with an auxiliary contact on that defrost contactor to switch the state that would have to be installed so in this current application controlling these coils with this controller in its factory configuration it's really not possible to use 
the low speed fan for anything, at least not without adding an auxiliary contact and an extra wire. Another note is I was being silly earlier. We can advance defrost from the home screen, which is a little bit less clunky than going into the hamburger menu and going to settings or set points or whatever it's called. Still a little bit clunky, but I can get into my defrost. And as you can see, my defrost current is gonna go up. So I can now set my defrost current to 22.3. And we can go to 2.5. You can do auto detect as well, but I ain't doing that. All right, alarm went away or alert, whatever you wanna call it. So now, we go back to defrost, scroll down, next mode, drain, scroll down, next mode, band delay. So another note is I was having an issue on startup because my pressure transducer wasn't reading. And one symptom this was having is it would keep, it was set for demand defrost and it just kept going into defrost and my angle valve to my pressure transducer was closed, so that's why I wasn't getting a good reading. That's about it for this. Hopefully this is helpful. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.